We're in Stellenbosch with Chris. How do we pronounce your name? Is it Mellinger. Melling Mellinger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Chris, what do you do? So right now I'm an assistant professor of uh, Spanish interpreting and translation studies. Okay. And I'm at UNC Charlotte, so in the okay. states. Okay. What part of the states is that? Uh, to the south, but on the eastern eastern coast. Okay. So yeah. The south. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you're not from the south. Okay. No, I'm not from the south. My family. Uh, uh, I grew up kind of all over the place, moving around, but mm -hmm. uh, have family in Ohio, so travel okay. around a lot. Okay. And what do you do there? Exactly. Um, so I teach uh, a number of courses, mostly on in interpreting at the moment. Mm -hmm. A lot of practice courses, medical, legal. Um, so that was kind of why I moved to UNC Charlotte was to develop the interpreting program. There. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're doing research there as well. Yes. That's... Yeah, and I do research. That's my. That's the the other part. You know, okay. I do the teaching and. Yeah, the... yeah. Well, what kind of research? So I'm working on. Uh, I do a lot of translation process research. Uh -huh. um, I'm interested in. Um, sort of the impact that technologies have on translation and interpreting and how that uh, kind of changes what it is that uh, translators and interpreters do. Um, have you any findings on that? Um, well, I think, the, I think the, the biggest thing is that uh, technology is always sort of touted as better, faster, mm. more efficient, and that might not always be the case. Yeah. And so uh, I think it's more complicated and... Uh, you know, with as much as much technology that's kind of coming out now and developing, it's there's definitely more nuance to it than just this is going to solve all our problems. Okay. Yeah. So you're looking at the way translators interact with machine translation, translation memories, mm -hmm. and other things as well. Or yeah. So I'm also and I'm also kind of interested in in how technology mediated or technology mediated interpreting. Um, so how that. Uh, yeah. An influence, so yeah, yeah. and how and how interpreters interact with it. So I worked on a project not too long ago. Um, how often? How, what's the likelihood that in, that interpreters want to uh, adopt technology, mm -hmm. um, and what their attitudes are toward technology, and uh, and does that change in different settings, in legal settings, in medical settings, conference settings? Can you give an example of what you mean by? mediated interpreting? So, you know, I, I think we often think about interpreting as, as, well, at least in community settings, you have the two parties and the person um, kind of going back and forth. But now with uh, the, you know, tablets, you know, you now have mm. this almost fourth entity that's sitting there. Well, okay. How do you interact with that? Um, how do you interact? But that's like for doing checks on terminology and things? Sometimes. Or, some or, people or, are using it now for note-taking as well. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. I'm, I'm not, a, I have terrible handwriting, so I don't think anything is going to help me no matter what with my note taking, okay. but maybe tablets are the way to go for me. Uh, um, but also, you know, if, if you have interpreters working in remote settings um, or with video conferencing yeah. materials. Oh, okay. There's all that so, technology yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not automatic translation with uh, text to speech. No. So no. it's not, it's not that sort yeah, of Yeah, that's not what I've yeah. been working on. Yeah. But, um, okay. But yeah, of course, there's people that are working on it. Okay. So, yeah. Let's go back to uh, when you were in your mid twenties. Okay. Where Don't was? Know that? How long ago? <laughs> yeah. Where, where were you? What were you doing then? Well, I I suppose I I had a a more traditional entry into the field because I in my mid twenties I was finishing I had finished up a master's in translation. Um, I went to Kent State, mm -hmm. and I took a year off to, to do some teaching. Uh, so do, you did a master's in, in, at Kent State, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How did you, what, prior to that, what did you study? I, so when I, why, why translation? Because there's not many places in the States yeah. you can do translation. So when right? I actually first started, I, for my bachelor's, I started thinking I was going to do math and economics. <laughs> okay. I, and then I, st I studied abroad, and, and I did an internship while I was abroad in Spain. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I got hooked and said, ah, I think I'm going to stay Spain here. Spain converted Spain you. converted me. Where were you? Uh, I was in Salamanca. Oh, right. Deep dark Spain. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. In, so, uh, and then I came back and sort of changed and did uh, some coursework in translation and, mm. and interpreting when I got back. Then sort of went into do the master's at Kent. Uh, took a year off between my master's and PhD and okay. then went back to Kent for my PhD. So, have you worked as a professional translator? I have. Interpreter? I've been doing that for... Over ten years at this point, if I start to think about that, yeah. So I, I work as a court interpreter. I yeah, work yeah. as a medical interpreter. So, 
Is that normal, do you think, in the States, that people doing research and teaching translation are also practitioners? I think there's a number of people, um, and I know in, at least in Charlotte, where I am, there are a few practicing translators and mm. interpreters. Um, a colleague of mine is, works in court quite a bit. And, okay. Yeah, okay. so okay. we wear multiple hats. Yeah. I, I'm interested in, in the panorama of translation studies in the States. I mean, Kent State really stands out, I mm -hmm. think, as, yeah. as the place to do to learn about translation research would that be correct I think Kent is kind of the is the one that's perhaps most visible I think mm. translation and interpreting are now popping up in a lot of places mm. even if it's a course here a course there um, you know UNC Charlotte we've got uh, certificate programs we have a master's level program and these are for others. court and healthcare, or so for things? us, uh, the translation program has a number of different areas. It's not a, it's a more a general degree, but mm. uh, not a specialized track. Um, and the same for interpreting; it's more on the community side as opposed yeah. to community court medical, um, but not conference. You know, okay. conference is not something that we're doing right now, anyway, in Charlotte. So. Not okay. a lot of places to do that in the States. Well, Monterey. And, Monterey is and, the um, one that comes to mind for me. And Baltimore. Oh, yeah, uh, University of Maryland. Baltimore. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, and I'd like to go back to the process research because sure. this, this is heavy duty, hands on, mm. serious research. Do you, are you alone in doing that or do you have a network around you? So in the States, there's a few people that are doing that work. I mean, I started at Kent and so, you know. So work, people at Kent? Are, yeah, I was are, working yeah. with Greg Shreve and, oh, right. and yeah, Eric Angelone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, started out with them and. Uh, uh, in the states, there's I think there's growing interest. Mm -hmm. um, the Trek network, the translation research empiricism cognition. There's a big network of folks that are working all over the world. And yeah. So that's okay. kind of been a nice. Plug so the in network for me. is is beyond just one country. Yes, beyond yeah. the states. Okay. And so that's been a great way to kind of link up with people that are working on those okay. kinds of questions. And also interested in how we get the results of research through to practitioners, or if they're there's any easy way of doing that. Isn't that the question that we, if we could solve that, it would be so much well, easier. Well, you're the social <laughs> media man. You're, you're very good at getting news out. Of so, yeah, well, yeah. I suppose social media is one way. Um, I also, I sometimes presented some of the professional conferences too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I was at a, a conference not too long ago that was geared entirely toward uh, professionals. Yeah. And there's a real interest. You find yeah. positive reactions. A positive not, reaction. Not you academic, you don't know what you're doing, where the guys you really know. Exactly. Uh, it's, uh, it, which is weird because even when, even five, ten years ago, the reaction was very different. Yeah. And so yeah. the conversations were, oh, well, how do we get involved? What, where do we find out more? Really? How do we access this? Great. Which was yeah. really a pleasant and encouraging surprise. So, yeah. So can they access the results easily? That's the mm, other I, thing. Yeah. I, well, I don't know, but I think I think we've been trying to find those links. It's hard to mm, do, you yeah, know, yeah. but with uh, you know, research is it just seems like it's exploding. There's so much of it now. It's drinking okay. from a fire hose as you try to figure yeah, yeah. out what pieces yeah, yeah. are useful for you. Yeah. Uh, what kind of research do you think we need these days? More process or do you see other areas that would be of interest? I think something that I'd like to see more of, and it's something that I'm interested in, is, is reflecting on the methodologies that we're using, mm -hmm. specifically for translation and interpreting studies. I think, you know, we've, we've, we've borrowed a lot, mm -hmm. we continue to borrow a lot, but what, what is it that is unique about what we do that requires tweaks, adaptations, or what can mm -hmm. we develop that then is of use to other disciplines? Well, we do find people who think empirical research is empirical research, and you set up an experiment, and that's the way it is. Do sure. You, do, are you suggesting this is not? I think that's true always? in in many respects, but I think we have different challenges. So, for instance, you know, we have sometimes high, very very small data sets. You know, you have yeah. you can only find a few people on you know after you've controlled all these variables to do something. Yeah. Or you can get these massive data sets of eye tracking data. Yeah. You know, just too much streams of data where it, you yeah. can't figure it out. So yeah. I think. And then and it, they're simultaneously in play at the same time. You get huge streams of data from a small number of mm -hmm. people. So what does that tell you? And, okay. and how do we resolve those issues? Well, do you do more qualitative or quantitative? Yeah, I think it's. I think that's kind of the, the way to get at it, is to use both. both yeah, qual sure. And, quant, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I do a lot more of the quantitative side of things, but uh, you know, I think it's important to have both. So, okay. Yeah. 
Do you see a difference between translation studies in Europe and translation studies in the United States? Mm. I mean, are you you're aware of the research that's being done in the field? Yeah, I, I, I definitely. Um, well, it's a it's a it's a bigger community in Europe. Mm. You know, I think it's been around for longer. At least that's my understanding. And so, um, the questions that are kind of come up are a bit different. The states is kind of a unique context for many reasons, mm -hmm. um, and so. The, some of the immediate pressing need that we have in the states to discuss issues surrounding community interpreting, language mediation, language policy, those are different than some of the challenges in, on the same topics in Europe or China or other you know, places, translations going on. So similar approaches, but I think the questions are often very, very different. Okay. But great, that's kind great. of fun. Yeah, and it's good to have you here in Africa. We're yeah, discovering it's, it's a, great to a be new able context to... as well. Mm -hmm, absolutely, a new a new context for more different types of research. So, Chris, thank you very much. Well, thank you.